Good morning, afternoon, evening, eighth grade. I hope that um, everything is going well for you. I know some of you have shared with me your rough drafts for your papers or you've asked questions. And I think um, those of you who have shared, you're pretty much on the right track. If you need um, any help or have any questions today, feel free to still ask, that's fine. Um, that's your main priority today is to work on your paper and have it to turnitin.com by 11.30 p.m. Um, if you have any questions or tech issues or anything like that, or, you know, you and, you know, all five of your siblings are trying to use the computer um, and it's just not working out, just let me know. Um, that's the key, it's just communication. Also, um, make sure that you turn your paper into turnitin.com, not the LMS page. Um, I put instructions under the composition worldview section of your um, LMS page for how to use Turnitin, and that's actually on your class calendar as well. You do have a discussion post due tomorrow. Um, not as much required with that one, but you still need to do it. It's kind of in place of taking a quiz, so we're not, you know, doing a quiz, but we're still discussing the book, and I want to get your feedback and things like that on it. Reading chapter 72 and 73 is today's reading and do the guided notes. Um, we're going to go over these and the character keeper chart tomorrow. So make sure that you have those with you. And before the end of the day tomorrow, your guided notes and character chart are due. And there's instructions there as well on the LMS page. So today the big thing is the paper being due. Um, remember, we don't have late penalties right now, so you do want to be responsible, but if you get in a pinch, you're trying to juggle, just let me know. Also, um, as I'm updating grades and things like that, if you see an M, you still have a chance to turn that in and there won't be a late penalty. I just put it there to flag it for you and for me so that we both know, ah, somehow that didn't make it through, whether it was a technological glitch or you forgot to do it or turn it into another part of the LMS site and I just didn't see it. So um, realize this is kind of a low pressure, low pressure thing for, for you guys right now. Um, all right, let me go ahead and go over chapters um, 60, sorry, 69 through 71 starting to see the count change, right? Um, so he has some emotions about his plans and we kind of saw this with Vfort when Vfort starts to go mad and he is, you know, trying to dig up his son um, from the ground, um, partly because he just lost one of his sons and partly because of the guilt um, that has been exposed in trying to kill his first son that he had with um, Madame Danglars. So he has, the Count does, some doubt about his revenge plans. He's starting to think, I've gone too far. This has gotten out of hand. I have no place to be doing this to people. And there's a cure though for the Count's doubt and it's when he revisits the past, specifically the Chateau de If, um, that you know, brings back a whole lot of past hurts. And so he actually, he buys something at the Chateau d'If, which was Abbe Faria's book. So he sees it there, he buys it. And then Maximilian and the Count make an agreement to meet at the Isle of Monte Cristo. So remember Maximilian is still, you know, despairing over Valentine, and um, he's trusting the Count. He doesn't even really know what he's trusting the Count with. The Count just says, remember, if he couldn't restore Maximilian's um, happiness within a month, then Maximilian could go ahead and take his own life. Chapter seven, um, we see Danglars. So he's run off with some money and he has traveled to Rome and he has some money from the bank. It's five million francs, um, which would be quite a bit. And someone's following Danglars, Peppino. So we saw Peppino um, earlier. He was supposed to be executed and then the count made sure he was pardoned. And then Peppino um, and Luigi Vampa um, were used in the case of kidnapping Albert to um, put the count in uh, Albert and his family's good graces for rescuing him. So what happens to Danglars as he leaves Rome? You could probably guess he's kidnapped by Luigi Vampa. Now, while he is held hostage by Peppino and uh, Luigi Vampa, anything that he wants to eat, Peppino tells him he has to pay 100,000 francs. 
for any item of food. You want some chicken, it's 100,000 francs. You want some bread, 100,000 francs. So he is taking all of his money, charging him an exorbitant amount um, because he's walking Danglars through the process of, of starving. Okay. And we'll see kind of the purpose for that. Um, you might be able to guess already um, some of what Danglars is made to go through, but we'll discuss that more tomorrow when we discuss the last few chapters and when we um, discuss our characters in the end of the book. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Let me know if you have any questions, need any help, um, anything like that. Um, and I will see you tomorrow.